Goodbye, NVIDIA. Let's talk about it. Stop whatever you're doing right now. Are you seriously browsing the internet unprotected? You, my friend, are just asking for your data to be stolen, and we all know you don't want anyone seeing that abomination of a search history. What you need is NordVPN. NordVPN is a great, insanely fast virtual private network service with over 5,300 servers worldwide offering the best connection in the business, allowing you to keep your privacy without having to deal with slow loading pages. But wait, there's more. Did you think security was the only benefit? Uh-uh, it also allows you to access shows and movies on places like Netflix or Disney Plus that may be locked out of your region, allowing you to finally get everything you paid for. So if you're paying for any streaming services, trust me, a VPN is a must-have. So what are you doing? Go download NordVPN right now. I am no longer asking. And while you're at it, go click the link in the description below to get a two-year plan plus one month free and a bonus gift. Plus it helps the channel and there's a 30-day money-back guarantee. Thank you to NordVPN for sponsoring this video. So remember how last week we went over the entire RTX 40 series lineup in terms of their specs, price, performance, and release date? Well, this time around we're going to be talking about the RX 7000 series of GPUs. That's right, AMD's next generation of GPUs. And guys, this is some really, really exciting stuff. If it's even possible, even more exciting than the RTX 4000 series as the performance on these RX 7000 series GPUs are absolutely incredible. So yes, this time around I've gone ahead and I put together a chart just like last week going over over every single piece of information I know all the way from the RX 7700 all the way to the RX 7950 XT or whatever they decide to call it. Maybe they'll call it like the Rage or the Fury or something like that again. But yeah, it's some really exciting stuff. Let's not waste any more time. Let's go ahead and take a look at this chart and why Nvidia could be in for some serious trouble. Now real quick before we get too deep into this chart, I just want to mention that a lot of this information does come from leakers such as Red Gaming Tab, Greymon55, uh, Comp87, Kimi, and many, many more people. I'll go ahead and link as many of those sources as I can in the description below, but you also have to keep in mind this is going to contain some stuff that I've heard personally as well as some speculation as well. So keep in mind that there is a little bit of room for some stuff to change such as the final clock speeds or even the naming of certain products as we don't have all that stuff 100% nailed down and we don't have quite as much information as we had with the RTX 4000 series simply because, well, there wasn't a massive data breach over at AMD. But with all that stuff out of the way, let's go ahead and take a look at this. And first, starting off with the RX 7700, this thing is going to be based off of what is likely going to be the Navi 33 die. I think this one's going to come in probably around $400. It's going to have 16 work group processors for a total of 4,096 shaders, a boost clock of 2.8 gigahertz, 8 to 16 gigabytes of G6X memory on a 128 bit bus, 256 megabytes of cache, and in terms of performance, it's going to be somewhere around the RTX 3090. Now, in terms of its release date, and reveal date. This is something that we simply don't know at this point, and it is likely going to come sometime after the first initial release of cards. So now moving on to the RX 7700 XT, this one's also likely going to be based off the Navi 33 die, coming at a price of around 500 US dollars, 20 work group processors, as this is going to be the full die of the Navi 33. It's going to have 5,120 shaders, a boost clock of potentially around 2.8 gigahertz or even higher, with 8 to 16 gigabytes of G6 plus memory depending on what they decide to do there on a 128 bit bus with 256 megabytes of cache once again and in terms of performance this is likely going to land somewhere around 20 percent faster than an rtx 3090 so yeah this is some really really powerful stuff and if you take a look at this actual diagram here what you can see is uh the full die here i just want to go over real quick uh for navi 33 just as a breakdown is going to be the 20 work group processors and it's going to be the smallest section of this entire thing that we're going to see until they reveal some really, really tiny GPUs. Then the Navi 32 die is going to be a longer, slightly bigger version of this monolithic GPU. Then what we're likely going to see after that is the full Navi 31 die, which is actually going to be the multi-chip module design. And this is going to house the absolutely most powerful GPUs. And the fact that AMD is going to be using a multi-chip module design is why some of these GPUs that we're going to be talking about in just a second here are going to be so powerful and are going to definitely cause some issues for NVIDIA. And NVIDIA is definitely going to have to push themselves to try and compete with something like a 7950 XT because again, two GPUs basically glued together, uh, much like they did with the Ryzen CPUs, is definitely going to be very, very powerful, and it's also going to be very cost efficient. But in any case, in terms of the reveal date of the 7700 XT, just like the 7700, I honestly don't know too much information about it at this point. So moving on to the RX 7800, and here's where things start to get a little more spicy. 
Now this GPU will likely be based off of the Navi 32 die. It'll come in at a price of probably around 600 US dollars, have 24 workgroup processors for a total of 6,144 shaders, probably going to be somewhere around a 2.7 gigahertz plus boost clock with anywhere between 12 to 24 gigabytes of G6 memory on a 192 bit bus with 384 megabytes of infinity cache this time around. And in terms of performance, probably going to be somewhere around 1.4 times as much as the RTX 3090. Now the reveal date for this GPU, I am expecting them to actually reveal it sometime around December. And I am also expecting availability to also be sometime around December of 2022. So this year. Now moving on to the ARC 7800 XT and this is the full Navi 32 die. This is going to come in at a price of around 700 US dollars. Have 30 workgroup processors so that's that full monolithic die there. Have 7680 shaders about 2.8 gigahertz or even possibly higher for the boost clock with 12 to 24 gigabytes of G6 plus memory on a 192 bit bus with 384 megabytes of infinity cache and in terms of performance this one's going to come in at around 1.6x the amount of performance of an RTX 3090 or at least that's what I'm estimating based on of all the leaks and specs that have been put out so far now in terms of the reveal date here I'm actually expecting this one to be revealed around December of 2022 once again and available again sometime around December 2022 hopefully not too much later but now moving on to the RX 7900 and here's where things get really really insane this is going to be based off of the Navi 31 GPU which is going to be the first MCM design GPU which means yes it's going to be incredibly powerful now in terms of price I am expecting this one to come in at around a thousand dollars we do have to expect the GPU prices are likely going to be going up unfortunately that's just the way things are likely going to be but the good news is although the prices will be going up you'll be getting so much more performance that you can simply just buy a tier down and still get a massive performance jump at the same price you normally would be purchasing something at but with all that out of the way let's go ahead and take a look first at the workgroup processors which this one's going to have probably around 40 WGPs which means it's going to have 10,240 shaders probably going to be around a 2.8 gigahertz plus boost clock here uh, with 16 gigabytes of G6 plus memory although it could go up to 32 gigabytes on a 256 bit bus in terms of the infinity cache here we're going to be talking about 512 megabytes which is half a gigabyte of cache that's absolutely insane in terms of performance I'm actually expecting around 85% faster than the RTX 3090. I'm also expecting it to be revealed sometime around December of 2022 with availability sometime around actually Q1 of 2023. But now moving on to the RX 7900 XT. This one's going to be based off of Navi 31 as well. Although this one I am expecting to come in at a price of around 1500 US dollars. Have 52 WGPs for a total of 13,312 shaders and a boost clock of 2.8 gigahertz or possibly even higher. Once again, we're talking probably around 16 gigabytes of G6 plus, although it could go up to 32 gigabytes on a 256 bit bus with 512 megabytes of cache again. And this one I'm expecting to be at least two times as powerful as the RTX 3090, although it is likely it's going to be slightly more than two times more powerful than the RTX 3090. Again, reveal date around December of 2022 and availability in Q1 of 2023. But now let's go ahead and talk about the final big kahuna RX 7950. XT and this one's gonna be based off of the full Navi 31 GPU probably gonna come in at around 2,000 US dollars possibly even higher have the full 60 WGPs for a total of 15,360 shaders which by the way is three times the amount of shaders that you see in the current RX 6900 XT so when you see people throwing about 2.5x the amount of performance as the 6900 XT that is actually technically feasible it just depends on how well it's gonna scale and I'm just betting it's not gonna scale quite as well as people are thinking uh, so with that in mind with a boost clock of probably around 3 gigahertz or at least close to it and 32 gigabytes of g6 plus memory on a 256 bit bus i would be shocked if they don't go with 32 gigabytes here considering this is going to be a massive flagship gpu uh, with a cache of 512 megabytes this thing in terms of performance i am expecting it to be at least 2.2x faster than the 3090 probably more like 2.25x or even faster than that, which is absolutely insane. I cannot believe we're going to be seeing a single GPU generation. We're talking about greater than two times the amount of performance over the previous flagship from both companies. That's just completely, utterly mind blowing. And I cannot wait to take a look at this GPU. But in terms of when you're going to be able to take a look at it, well, the reveal date, again, I am expecting them to talk about it in December of 2022. 
but once again probably not going to see this thing until q1 of 2023 i imagine this one will come out a little bit later simply because of yields as well as trying to get the software and all that sort of stuff down uh, making sure that the drivers are all working really really great to make sure that you're getting the best scaling they possibly can out of a gpu like this because we have to remember this is their first attempt to try and create an mcm design gpu so there probably is going to be a little bit of a driver headache that they're working on right now but yeah that's pretty much everything that i know about the entire rx7000 series lineup like i said once again it is possible that like final memory counts as well as final clock speeds and even the names of certain gpus could end up changing slightly we just simply don't know 100 sure for every single spec that's out there but overall i am pretty confident that the final specs will land pretty close to this and it goes to show you that yes nvidia definitely should be worried and this is why you're seeing things being thrown around like 500 600 even 800 watts on a top skew for nvidia's top gpu because what we're talking about here is and honestly I don't think you're going to see an 800 watt NVIDIA GPU, by the way, but I could see maybe 600 watts. And the reason why they might be pushing it that hard is because, like I talked about last week, when we took a look at something like the RTX 4090 or 4090 Ti, whatever they decided to call it, maybe it was even called the Titan again. Um, what we saw was it's probably going to be very, very close to around two times as powerful as the RTX 3090. Well, if AMD's 2.25 times as powerful as the 3090, well, then if NVIDIA can just squeeze out another 10% performance, it's going to make a lot of people go ahead and avoid AMD once again because they're going to see it as a pretty negligible difference. Obviously, uh, the extreme overclockers and stuff are just going to buy the fastest regardless, but NVIDIA has a lot of mindshare, so if they can just narrow the gap close enough where it's not really very noticeable, but still offer better features or better driver support or better encoding with stuff like Premiere Pro, that's what's going to drive people to continue to buy NVIDIA, even if for the first time in basically forever, they actually end up losing to AMD, which honestly, um, you know, I'm, I'm not a fan of either company company, but it would be a good shakeup to see someone pull ahead of NVIDIA because I do think that it's going to allow uh, for more competition in the market. And then you throw an in Intel on top of that. You got three GPU manufacturers. I think that no matter basically who wins, this is going to be a great thing for consumers who are just getting more competition, which means inevitably better supply as well as lower prices. But hey, that's just what I think. Which company do you think is going to have the fastest GPU? Let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments below. And of course, I'll see you in the next video. If you made it to the end of the video, be sure to drop a like. Every time you do so, AMD and Nvidia get more stock. Also, if you want to see more, click here. You won't be disappointed.